Hey guys, welcome to the Queer Bus. I'm Nan, and as you can see, it's just me tonight. Andy's really sick with a cold, so I'm going to be your only driver on this trip. Um, he's way better at the lighting situation than I am, so I'm sorry. It kind of looks like I'm getting ready to tell you guys a ghost story. Uh, that is not the case. Um, what we're going to be talking about is um, there was a show that aired on the TLC channel over the weekend called My Husband's Not Gay. For anybody who didn't watch it, um, basically it followed several couples in Salt Lake City who are Latter-day Saints slash Mormons. Um, all of the men in these couples, the husbands in these couples, um, had what they call SSA, which, have you guys heard of that? Because I never had. Um, SSA is um, same-sex attra same sex attraction. And... There was a total look of panic on everybody's faces anytime the word gay was used in the show. Um, gay, bisexual, they don't identify that way. Um, SSA is, is what they're comfortable with. So it was the typical, like, interviewing the people, following them around in different situations. Um, and as you can imagine, watching it, um, I was at times amused, I was... Um, at times kind of bewildered and horrified. Sometimes it was sad. There were times when it was um, pretty painful to watch. So um, at first it was it was pretty it was pretty funny and maybe just for me because I um, I laugh a, a lot about situations that are awkward and so much of the show was really, really awkward. Um, there was one there was one scene where, um, the group of guys went to go play basketball, and they were just kind of standing around the basketball court, just, like, checking out the guys who were there, um, and then they went to play, and they went up to this other group of guys and were like, hey, you want to play? You guys should be skins. <gasps> skins! Like, oh my god, and so, okay, so then, there's another scene where two of the couples went to lunch, and, um, they had this very attractive male server, who was helping them out. And so he comes to take their order, and the one guy orders a goat cheese salad, and he's like, but only if you milk those goats yourself. <gasps> what? Milking the goats? Are you serious? Okay, and then, then, um, at the end of the meal, <laughs> at the end of the meal, um, the server comes back to check on how everything went, and the other guy had ordered hummus, and he's like, this is the best hummus I've ever had. <gasps> okay, you're like, you're batting your eyes about the hummus. Oh, it was so awkward. And the wives were right across the table from them, looking at them like... It, like, anybody who's been in a relationship has been in that situation where you just pissed your partner off in public and they're not going to say anything to you right now, but you know you're going to hear about it all night when you get home. It was just like that. It was so awkward. Like, that scene stressed me out because the wives were right there watching them flirt with this guy. And it was like, it stressed me out. I can't even tell you. Like, I'm trying to explain it. It was like, it was like the time when I was a kid and my parents accidentally took me in to see Basic Instinct. <laughs> not knowing, like, what was gonna happen there on the movie. They were just like, oh, murder mystery. It's like Sherlock Holmes. Awesome. And we go. <laughs> and for any of you guys who have seen that movie, uh, there's a lot of sex in it, which, you know, my parents are like, I was sitting between my parents, and they each had a hand over my eye eyes, but they, but I could still hear all the sounds, so it was, like, super, super awkward. And then, like, and then there's the part, for all you youngsters who <laughs> weren't around when this movie came out, there's the scene where Sharon Stone's getting intimidated, or intimidated, interrogated, and she's like, keeps crossing her legs, and she's wearing a skirt without anything on under it, so you keep seeing Sharon Stone's, like, unfrosted cookies. And at that point, like, we left the theater, but the damage was done. It was that kind of stressful. <laughs> To watch this. So crazy. So then, okay, so, um, you know, but they're interviewing these guys and they're all, they're all saying, um, 
that they're they're attracted to their wives. Some of them are saying they're attracted to other women sometimes. Um, some of them seem to just be attracted to their wives as far as women are concerned, um, as, uh, you know, what they're saying. Um, so, what I want to say about, about the people involved on this show, they're all pretty relatable, this topic aside. Um, you know, they were kind of all-American. There was, like, the guy who, um, was super businesslike. There was the girl who was kind of high-strung and neurotic, and there's the other guy who made lots of jokes, like, and it was kind of like watching a really weird episode of Friends, or it was like watching an episode of Friends meets the Twilight Zone. Um, so, you know, entertaining. Um, a few of the couples had kids, beautiful kids, they seemed like loving parents, so, you know, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to demonize anybody, um, on this show, um, but I do want to talk about the message that they have received to to um, feel that this is the life that they that they have to live. Um, all of the guys had said what they always wanted was a family. They always wanted to get married. They always wanted to have kids. Um, that it was really important to them. Their community is really important to them. Their families, their faith. Um, all these things they said were very important to them. And so as far as they're concerned, they're living the life that they want to live. Um, what, what that viewpoint discounts is that there are more than, there's more than one way to be a family, to be a parent, to, um, be a part of a, a community that cares for you, to be a part of, um, a faith that is supportive of who you are. Um, you know, and it's a dangerous message. It, you know, all jokes aside, you know, we can call back to last week's episode of The Queer Bus where we talked about the transgender teen who committed suicide hearing a very similar message um, that, you know, who you are is not acceptable, um, that you need to repress this part of yourself to be included in in your family and in your community and in your church. Um and, you know, essentially what these guys are going through with, you know, with, with what they're doing is conversion therapy. And that's a really dangerous thing. Um, it's a dangerous thing for them to be hearing. It's a dangerous message to, to pass down to children. Um, so we here on the, on the Queer Bus, um, one of our goals is to provide a counterpoint to a message like that. Our message here is, you know... Whatever your family looks like, whoever you're attracted to, whoever you love, um, there is a community for you here. There's a way that you can have a family, to be a parent, to have a lifelong partner, to to um, be a part of a church that loves you, if, if that's what you want, um, to, you know, have kids if that's what you want, to, you know... To live the, the life that you want without having to put this part of you way up on a shelf where, where, you know, you feel like maybe you can't reach it. Um, so, for all, all you guys watching, um, we celebrate you just as you are. Whoever you love, whoever you're attracted to, whatever your family looks like, that's okay. And, um, if you want to follow us, um, you can subscribe, you can comment if you saw the show or if you have some opinions on, on the show, um, please feel free to comment here on YouTube or on our Facebook page. Uh, Andy's going to be back with us on the next episode. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next week on the Queer Bus. Bye guys.